Hi, I'm Nick Bonner for TreeStuff.com. I've got Craig Bachman here. We're gonna talk about angles, how the angle of the tree affects rigging, how the load and the angle combine to really load up the crux and the torque of the tree. And Absolutely. you've got a whole presentation. I think we're ready. We've got some pre-cut stuff. Uh, I'm gonna leave you to it and join the audience and watch and uh, you know, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Nick. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. It's awesome to be at TCI Expo 2019 and Tree Stuff, thank you so much for making this possible. Cool. Take it away. So, <sighs> there've been a variety of things over the years that have been super valuable to me. I've learned a lot from mentors, from coworkers, training I've gone to. There was a really cool article that I read a number of years ago written by a guy named Joe Harris, a super awesome arborist down in Australia. And that article is called Working the Angles. I guess it's actually a paper that he wrote. And uh, I had some communication with Joe and I uh, asked him if I could share some of those concepts that I learned uh, about loading at a rigging point, torque that's created, the load in the tree. And that was really influential to me and I hope these will be valuable to uh, other people as well. So here, let's, let's look at a common scenario. Imagine we've been climbing, maybe we're doing a removal, maybe we're doing some pruning, and we need to take this end off of a limb. And for whatever reason, we can't just cut and drop it, right? That would be the easiest, safest way to do it. But what we really need to do is we need to rig it down. Maybe there's something fragile underneath. And so I think about this scenario in ways that I've done it, ways that I've seen it done, and ways that it's gone wrong. And so when I think about what often happens, the climber comes out, I'm the climber, and I'll position myself here. And you see I've pre-made a face notch just to make this easy for us. But I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna ask my ground guy for a rope. And what I realize is I don't have a rigging point behind me. But we've all been in this scenario where you are at a point where you need to make a cut, you need a rope, and you're just gonna rig it off of the piece where you're standing. And the question is, what is the loading that happens in the tree? And Joe Harris's article, uh, Working the Angles, really goes into this. And I wanna try to share some of those concepts so that you can better understand uh, how you're loading the tree when you're rigging pieces. And so let's start with a couple of quick assumptions. One is our cut is 10 feet from the limb attachment. Just makes basic, basic math using tens. The piece that we're gonna rig is 100 pounds. Again, simple math. And let's assume this branch is at a 45 degree angle. The goal of this is just to set up a scenario where we have some numbers that we can talk about. So imagine yourself up in the tree. I imagine myself being out here. I'm gonna call for uh, a rope and maybe a pulley or a small block and I'm gonna rig off this end. So let's set that up. I'm gonna set my rigging point, And I got my rigging line. Now this is small, it's 100 pounds, right? How big a gear would I need? So my ground guy ties that on, sends it up. I'm gonna set up a uh, half hitch underneath and a running bowline up above. I want this piece to be really secure. Again, we don't wanna do property damage. All right, so I've got my running bowline. I'll tie it on the side so we can see them. I've got my half hitch here, and I've got it run through my rigging point. And so where does the ground guy usually stand, right? We think about being underneath this piece. We certainly don't want to stand in the drop zone, so what does the ground guy do? The ground guy stands out here. In a moment, we're gonna look at what some of these numbers are, what are the forces that are created. So let's do some basic angles and loads. Let's imagine we cut this piece. All right, we'll use our good communication, right? Stand clear, all clear. We're gonna cut this piece. It's only 100 pounds. When we run our rope through a rigging point and the two legs of rope are parallel, so there's zero degrees of separation, everybody I think is familiar with what this loading is. If I have 100 pounds on this side, I therefore, where my hand is holding it or my friction point, I've gotta have 100 pounds there. So when the rope legs are parallel, we double the load at our rigging point. That makes sense. So 100, 100, we've got 200 pounds at our rigging point. As we open this angle, 
the load at the rigging point goes down. When we open the angle to 45 degrees, we take it down to about 185 pounds, about 1.8 times. If we can open that angle to 90 degrees, it takes it down to 1.4 times the load. So a 100 pound piece, we put only about 140 or 141 pounds there. If we could take that angle to 120 degrees, 100 pounds here only puts 100 pounds of load at our rigging point. I think that's something that most people, most climbers, people doing rigging are familiar with. But what we don't talk about is this load over here. We've used the term, or you may have heard the term, bending moment or torque. What those both represent is the idea of a load at a distance. And what is the force that's put onto the attachment of the limb? So if we imagine this scenario, we've got our 100 pound load, our 10 foot distance, the big question we're gonna answer is what is the torque? What is the bending moment that we're putting on the tree? Because in the end, if I'm the climber, I'm standing out here with my own weight, I'm rigging into this limb, how much do I have to worry about breaking that attachment? And it's really important as a climber, as a cutter, that I need to understand the forces I'm putting in the tree. So let's go back to our scenario. My ground guy, we'll call him Jeff. Jeff's on the ground and he's gonna hold this rope. And like we talked about before, Jeff doesn't want to stand directly underneath the piece. He's most likely going to go out here. He's going to stand outside the drop zone. And the question is, is that a good idea? Well, it's opened the angle, so maybe he's reduced the load a little bit. But what has he done to our limb? What has he done to the torque? Now, so let me share a few numbers with you that uh, I thought were really interesting. And again, this comes out of Joe Harris's article called Working the Angles. If we have a 100 pound piece, and it's just, just hanging here, or we've rigged it off and caught it nice and softly, so we have a 100 pound weight loaded here, and my rope comes straight down, so I've doubled the load. I got 200 pounds here. I wonder if anybody can guess what the load is. At a 10 foot distance with a 200 pounds, we're putting 1,400 pounds of torque on that attachment point. That number blew my mind and I had to go back through and understand the forces. The concept is that we have created a lever arm and that leverage is load at distance, creating this torque, this movement, or this force on the limb attachment. So let's talk about what happens and how we can reduce that force. One way to reduce it is the open the angle. And what we talked about is if Jeff takes the rope outside here and opens that angle, say, to 20 degrees, sure, that reduces load here at my rigging point. It actually only reduces it by about 5 or 10%. It's very minor. But what it actually does is it changes the vector force. And maybe you've heard that term vector before. The vector is if we have a load in one leg and a load on the other, that vector divides the angle. So instead of our vector being straight down, our vector force is now going where? It's going outward away from the tree, and we're actually increasing torque. So by having Jeff stand outside the canopy to hold this rigging line, we're gonna take this torque from 1,400 to 1,700 pounds. So we've actually increased the load by 25% just by him trying to stand outside the drop zone, outside the canopy. So let's look at it another way. He certainly doesn't want to be underneath the piece. What if he comes inside? And we'll open that angle again, say 20 degrees. We've reduced the force now. We've reduced the torque. At zero degrees, at 10 feet, we we're about 1,400 pounds of torque. When we move inside, it takes it down to about 1,100. That's a big difference. And where is that difference? It's at the point of attachment. Now it's important to realize we're using theoretical cases here, right? We're not talking about a dynamic load. This is just static. We're talking about, we're using a four by four post. So we don't have taper. We don't have potential defects. We don't have flexing in the limb. We don't have elongation in the line. But from a conceptual standpoint, where our vector force is relative to our limb, has a huge impact on the torque we put on the tree. 
So let's talk about what we could do to more effectively minimize load here and minimize torque. And the goal being to not break the tree. Because where do we get in trouble with rigging? We get in trouble when we put in a shock load, we get in trouble when we overload our rigging gear, and we get in trouble when we overload the tree. And my hope out of this is that you take away some of these fundamental concepts and you begin to think differently about your rigging relative to what are the forces you're putting in the tree. So what's the old school way to do it? We're, I think it's coming back now, people with aerial friction brake, the, uh, the safe block, other ways, the rig and wrench to put friction at the rigging point. The goal is to reduce force. So let's imagine we do that. If we were to do this the old school way, instead of using a block here, what would we do instead? We'd take a wrap. Maybe we'd take two wraps if we thought we needed. The downside is it's inconsistent, but the positive side is it reduces the force. So if we now have the same piece, and let's rig this up again, we have our same 100 pound piece, and we have friction in the tree, and we'll use an extreme example, right? Let's say I'd put three wraps on it. Of course this doesn't need three wraps, but the concept is there's no load in this leg of the line. If this weighs 100 pounds, our load here is only 100 pounds. We've cut the loading in half. So let's go to the second piece, right? It's not just the load, it's the torque. It's the bending moment. If we can reduce the load to 100, it cuts our torque in half too. So instead of 1,400 pounds at the attachment, it's only feeling 700 pounds. That's a huge difference. But what we talked about earlier is the inconsistency of wraps. Does it run right? Is it smooth? Does it lock up? Does one wrap lay over the other? There's all kinds of things that can go wrong. And often when we're rigging, we want to use this rigging point or wherever we are for multiple pieces. Changing the number of wraps in between doesn't make any sense. But for an example, the concept is when we have what's essentially a canopy anchor rather than a basal anchor, if we apply climbing terminology, we've cut the force at the rigging point in half and we've cut the torque in half. But if this is impractical, what else could we do? Let's go back to our angles. By opening the angle, we can reduce load. So let's set that up one more time. We've got our 100 pound piece. So if we're gonna open this angle, I can open it to here, and that significantly reduces my force. Well, how else could I open it? This would be our traditional rigging setup, right? Where we now have this through a Porter app or some sort of friction device. And that takes our load down around 1,000 pounds. Or excuse me, our torque down to around 1,000 pounds. But what else could we do? What if we used a redirect? Or what if we used another rigging point? And so to accomplish that, I'm just gonna feed this through. So imagine the climber had gone ahead and set another block high in the tree. I'll lock this off for our demo. All right, so what have we done with this angle up here? You remember that conversation we had about vectors a few minutes ago, that the vector bisects the angle. If I divide this angle in half, where is that force? It's running right down the limb. So I've taken a lateral limb and I've used a redirect to open the angle and now this limb is loaded entirely in compression. I still have load here, but at 120 degrees, our load is equal to the weight of the piece. So this is 100 pounds. I now only have 100 pounds here. So here's the big question. What is our torque? What is our bending moment at the attachment? Zero. By opening the angle, redirecting, and lining up the force vector directly down the limb, the limb is entirely loaded in compression. There is no bending moment at that attachment. So instead of 1,400 pounds that we're worried about, remember the climber standing out here making this cut. Instead of 1,400 pounds at that attachment, wondering if that limb is gonna hold, we've taken that torque theoretically to zero. 
So what we've talked about are a few different ways to do this. We've talked about this common scenario of needing to rig off the end of a limb. And where do we stand? Where does the ground guy stand? And how do we reduce loads? And let's just do a quick review of it. The key thing I want you to take away from this today is that when you're up in the tree, or if you're a ground man, and you're rigging underneath, don't walk outward with that rope. All you're doing is increasing torque on the tree, increasing the likelihood of breaking that limb. If anything, walk underneath. Even if it's a lightweight piece and you can just hold it and let it run with your gloves, walk underneath the outside the drop zone. Increase the amount of compression. Reduce that angle. And for you climbers listening, anytime you can, set another block. Ideally, we'll have our primary rigging point way up here in the top of the tree. But we all know once in a while we're working over a house, we need to take one limb off and it's just down low. Maybe you're not gonna go all the way up in the tree, but by setting a redirect block, opening that angle and loading the limb in compression, you significantly reduce the potential for breaking that limb. Again, this is a theoretical simple setup. Uh, my intention is that these concepts stick with you, that when you're on the ground, when you're in the tree and you're setting your rigging, I want you to think about the load at the rigging point and think about the torque at the attachment and how you can best work with the tree and minimize load forces to work safely, work smart, and go home every day. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I hope these are helpful to you.